Today is July 22nd. It's the 204th day of the year, and this is the On This Day podcast. On this day in 1934, the film Manhattan Melodrama, starring Clark Gable and Myrna Loy, plays at the Biograph Theater on the north side of Chicago. When the film ends around 1040, the moviegoers walk out of the theater and into the night. Among them is John Dillinger, in the company of a couple of lady friends. When he steps out of the biograph on Lincoln Avenue on this day, Dillinger is met by a half-dozen FBI agents who stake out the theater earlier, waiting for just this moment. John Dillinger is a notorious bank robber. He's even so bold as to rob police stations. While he's a dastardly criminal pursued in a nationwide manhunt by J. Edgar Hoover, and his Federal Bureau of Investigation. Dillinger is also somewhat of a folk hero in the height of the Great Depression. To some, Dillinger is a modern-day Robin Hood, robbing banks that have failed the hard-working people of America. To the FBI, Dillinger is public enemy number one. The FBI gets a tip from an informant close to Dillinger, that he's going to the movies this night. When Dillinger emerges from the biograph, he sees the agents and tries to escape down an alley, but the feds have blocked it off. Shots are fired in all directions, the G-men aiming to take their man down, and Dillinger determined to shoot it out in a blaze of glory. John Dillinger is struck by four bullets on this day in 1934. He passes away on the asphalt of Lincoln Avenue in Chicago before the ambulance can arrive. According to the paper, women dip their skirts and handkerchiefs in the pools of blood forming around his body as keepsakes. Born on this day in 1882, artist Edward Hopper. Hopper is born in Upper Nyack, New York on the Hudson River, just north of New York City. It will come as no surprise that he gravitates to art and painting at an early age. When Hopper is a tween, he's reproducing nature scenes in charcoal and watercolors. When he is 13, he signs his first oil painting, Rowboat in Rocky Cave. He studies at the New York School of Art and Design, which years later becomes Parsons School of Design. He's influenced by all the great Impressionists and Masters. I'll give you a moment to think of the most famous artists you can think of in those arenas. Yep, those folks. But no one wants to buy his artwork, so he works as a commercial illustrator and takes up etching. Hopper frequently paints scenes of New England, the coastal communities of Gloucester, Cape Cod, and all up and down the main shoreline. He and his wife Jo build a house and a studio in Truro on the Cape. But Hopper's main home is in Greenwich Village, where he draws inspiration from the street life around him. Or rather, the streets around him. Many of his paintings of New York are devoid of pedestrians, restaurant patrons, store customers. The familiar urban landscape is oddly foreign in its unsettling stillness. Solitary individuals in a setting that is normally hustling and bustling. His paintings of nighttime reveal his fascination with dramatic lighting and voyeurism. Streams of angular light emanate from windows behind which private lives are on display in the proscenium arch of the window frame. His depiction of night feels like that hour when it just can't get any later and can only begin to get early. Except in Hopper's night, it just keeps getting later. Edward Hopper is not a prolific artist, 
But his paintings and his style have a profound impact on 20th century pop culture. The lighting and look of Hopper's paintings inspires the work of a number of film directors, Terence Malick, Vim Vendors, Ridley Scott, Dario Argento. Hopper's work inspires the look of the 2008 Disney animated film, Bolt. And in particular, his painting, House by the Railroad, of a house on Conger Avenue in Haverstraw, New York, inspires the look of the house in the Alfred Hitchcock film Psycho, the creepy Victorian abode perched above the Bates Motel, inhabited by Norman and his mother. But Edward Hopper's most well-known painting is without question Nighthawks. Described by those at the National Gallery of Art as an icon of American culture, reworked and parodied countless times in popular culture. The brightly lit diner on the corner of a deserted Greenwich Village intersection in the darkest hour of a hopper night. At the counter sits a couple who may or may not be together, but have a smidge of tension between them. A sinister fellow in a suit sits across from them with his back to us, and a young blonde man works behind the counter. Nighthawks is one of those paintings that is instantly recognizable, not only because it's a famous painting, but it is widely parodied in a variety of ways. Artist Gottfried Heinwein pays homage to it with his painting Boulevard of Broken Dreams, substituting Hopper's diner patrons with Humphrey Bogart, Marilyn Monroe, and James Dean, with Elvis working the counter. Countless films pay homage to Hopper's iconic diner setting, as does The Simpsons in several episodes, that 70s show, even CSI. The scene is referenced in literature, in music, in theater. Brazilian artist Vic Munez replicates the back of Nighthawks, creating an exact replica of the back of the frame and canvas of Hopper's famous painting. Munez's work, entitled Verso, Nighthawks, is on display at the Albright Knox in Buffalo, New York. Put in a plug. Edward Hopper, born on this day in 1882, passes away in 1967 at the age of 84. The bulk of his work is donated by his wife in her will to the Whitney Museum in New York. His paintings also hang in the Museum of Modern Art and the Des Moines Art Center. And Nighthawks is in the collection of the Art Institute of Chicago. There are 162 days left in the year. On This Day is produced by me, Dave Schultz. Thank you very much for listening. Also born on this day in 1890, Rose Kennedy, matriarch of the Kennedy dynasty. Also in 1940, Alex Trebek, Jeopardy host and Canadian. And born on this day in 1941, George Clinton. Singer, songwriter, and leader of Parliament Funkadelic. So if you're still listening... Talk to you tomorrow. Never missing a beat, yeah. Boy, was it neat, yeah. Not just me, deep, she was totally deep when she did the freak with me. Never missing a beat, yeah. Boy, what's in need, yeah. The girl's a freak, the girl never misses a beat, yeah, yeah. It didn't twerk, no. It wasn't fucking, no.